Hello and welcome to SolarTechDIY.com. This is Pat speaking and I am going to show you how to make a pair that would be a pair of solar cells which is the core essential anchor structure in a solar panel. All else starts with the pair of solar cells. Now you want to put your solar cell onto a good solid work surface. Now in the instruction manual I talk about how great glass is and it is. However for filming a how-to video glass leaves a lot to be desired. Unfortunately it reflects the light and it would greatly detract from your viewing experience. So I'm using a very good piece of pine board. Now what you didn't see thus far was the measuring of these tabbing wire strips. That's something that uh, we had done when we shot the video that's attached to the instruction manual which you may have already watched. So now that we have our appropriately uh, length tabbing wire strips it's time to affix them onto the top negative side of the solar cell. Now notice I use my cushioned weights to assist me in the placement of the tabbing wire it must be directly over the bus bar and covering it completely. The weights offer an excellent placeholder capacity because basically the solder tip is creating friction as it's moving either left or right across the tabbing uh, wire surface. Uh, it's definitely trying to move the tabbing wire either left or right. Uh, so even with very gentle pressure it's a factor you have to consider. So using a very light weight as you see off to the right of the solar cell that I'm soldering on it's a weight that came from um, I believe it's a wheel puller. Not 100% sure but it's very small and it does the job nicely. The wood You'll notice uh, the single weight in the upper left corner and the single weight in the lower left corner is all I need to help keep the solar cell from sliding. If I was using glass, these two weights probably wouldn't be enough because glass is just slippery and the friction on the top of that tabbing wire is enough to push it across the glass. And when pieces are moving that you're attempting to solder things get out of hand pretty quick. You can imagine. So let's examine how I'm soldering this tabbing wire. Notice how I start to the left of the placement weight and what that does is it secures not only the tabbing wire but the solar cell itself and as I move away from the weight there's very little chance that either the tabbing wire or the solar cell will be moved by my action. We want them to be nice and, and uh, steady. Placement is very important. Now what you don't see me doing is uh, freshly tinning the solder tip. I have a video for you attached to the instruction manual on how to perform this task very important to keep your solder tip in good clean working order because oxidation or uh, impurities, contaminants, they all serve to reduce the lifespan of the solder tip. Corrosion can occur overnight and if you leave your unprotected solder tip to nature it will corrode. So on this particular cell you notice that after I had soldered to the left of my placement weight. I moved that placement weight. It became part of the weights holding the entire cell down. Now we've finished with this first. This would be our first cell of the string. Our goal when we create pairs is to add those pairs to a string. Solar panels can have three strings, four strings, two strings. It's really up to you. Solar panels can be customized to an output of your specific purpose. We'll get into that more later but 
Nonetheless, it all starts with the pair. The only thing that would be different if you were working on a, a another solar panel would be perhaps you might be using a monocrystalline solar cell with different measurements. Now notice what I'm doing here. Every time I bring the the uh, solder gun into play, I always wet the rosin solder flux pen, I'm sorry, the rosin flux pen, and then I apply it to the solar cell, and in particular the bus bar on the solar cell. By wetting the flux pen on cardboard or a piece of wood, you're causing the tip to absorb that flux material so that when you run the pen across the surface of the bus bar, you're not having to apply pressure. It literally just slides off onto the bus bar surface. And when you're applying your rosin flux with the pen, uh, you, d you just want enough to cover the bus bar surface. Uh, it, it can be difficult because the tip on the rosin flux pen isn't exactly a micro point. It's more like a, a sharpie or a magic marker. Uh, so it's actually a little bit wider than the, the bus bar. So you have to be disciplined. You have to have good eyesight. I always wear a headlamp magnifying glass to make sure I can see my soldering tip making contact. And this brings up a good point. What you're doing here requires you to, to be able to see what you're doing. Now I'm not uh, I'm not exactly fighter pilot uh, vision capable, so I must use some sort of magnifying apparatus. And I have a photo of what I use in the instruction manual, the uh, head-mounted magnifying glass. It's comfortable. It's got multiple power uh, lenses ready at the flip of a switch. You just rotate them down because you, you really have to be able to see when this tabbing wire is in the appropriate position. And this solder tip, as you can see it making contact with the bus wire, and you're talking about a surface that's less than a quarter inch. In fact, it's less than an eighth of an inch wide. It requires you to be able to see. Now, as I'm soldering these tabbing wires, Note how relatively quick we cover that surface. You know, this is not a five minute project. It, it literally takes seconds to secure each tabbing wire. But remember, it's not a foot race. Take your time. You want a, a good, level, smooth tabbing wire. There shouldn't be any lumps, uh, clumps of solder that uh, have been pooled because you put too much on. It's just you want to keep it nice and neat. Okay, now that we've prepared the negative sun facing side of the solar cell, it's now time to join the two solar cells. And remember when we join solar cells, and this is true not only of your first pair of solar cells, but this technique carries through all the way to the completion of the solar panel and everyone you do after this will all follow that same format. And when we talk about series wiring, series wiring is nothing more than connecting negative leads to positive leads. As we're looking at this particular solar cell that I just prepared to receive the tabbing wire from its new mate, you'll notice that we have flipped over the solar cells. We're now looking at the back side of the cell. And if you look at that cell that I just placed the weight on, notice where the tabbing wire is coming from. It's coming from underneath, or more appropriately, it's coming from the negative front or sun facing side of the solar cell. And as you'll notice here, that tabbing wire connects to the back of the cell it's connected to. 
So top of cell A connects to the back of cell B. Then when we move on to the next pair, we will have two strips of tabbing wire protruding just as you see here. In your mind's eye, just imagine that we are trimming the tabbing wire on a pair. And instead of joining two cells, we would be joining two pairs of cells. Same principle, same process. So mastering what you're seeing here is something that will serve you again and again and again. So take your time. Make sure you learn it well because it's not difficult at all. In fact, the benefit of having these videos, something that I didn't have when I started out, you can see and observe uh, and not have to do trial and error on your particular uh, project. Let me make the mistakes. I can assure you I've made plenty of them, uh, but not here. And luckily, I can pass on my collective knowledge. So here we are positioning this second cell. Now I've done something slightly different. I moved the pair down to the edge of my work surface. That gives me the straight edge on at least one side. And of course we know since it's these are congruent sides, if the bottom is even, so will be the top. And we need to have consistent gaps between our cells, hence our use of the pencil erasers. And so the pencil I've erasers aren't other videos. the most original space keeper, but it works. That's all that matters. So if you have something that is approximately the same size, you're good to go. Now, when we solder the bus bar or the bus tab on the back side or positive side of the cell, it's a slightly different procedure. You'll notice that I placed the soldering tip already heated you want to let it heat up just for 10 seconds, 5 seconds, and ensuring that you've tinned the solder tip properly first. It's very important because if you don't tin it, it won't conduct heat effectively. So it's very important. Once you've tinned the solar cell and put the tabbing wire in position, as I'm doing now with this particular strip, pay attention when I set the heated solder tip against the tabbing wire. The process involves that tabbing wire heating up, the, the very thin micron layer of tin melts to the bus tab and then with the soldering, uh, the, the tabbing wire now superheated, all we do is touch the tabbing wire with our solder wire and the solder wire melts. We never touch the solder tip with the actual solder wire. If you were to do that, you would indeed cause the solder wire to liquefy. It would appear to properly coat the bus tab, but in actuality, it would have very poor electrical uh, conductive properties. It's known as a cold solder. So it's very important that that soldering tip sit on the uh, tabbing wire slash bus bar and the tabbing wire melt naturally by making contact with the heated bus bar. That's the proper way to do it. And it doesn't require physical pressure. You're not putting any downward pressure. That has nothing to do with the solder wire melting. It's all about the cumulative heat built up in that tabbing wire which melts the solder, which then envelopes the tabbing wire, it coats the bus bar surface, and it makes a tight bond. Because essentially, when you solder, you're, you're joining two different metal alloys. Uh, technically, that's what you're doing. So done improperly, uh, you could have a weak joint. And you know, we're not talking about a ship and rivets that come loose over time. Now, this is a shouldn't have a whole lot of movement, but it will separate uh, simply due to the fluc 
fluctuation of temperatures. So if you have a cold solder, that's going to be the first one to give way. Oops, ah, that happens. No big deal. Had it fallen the other way and cracked my cell, I might, might not be so jovial about it. Okay, so as we come to the end of this particular mating of cells, this is a core competency. But don't let yourself get intimidated or freaked out thinking that you have to master this or it's all for naught. It is important, uh, and you will get it if you're having difficulty. Just watch the video repeatedly and practice. Uh, don't practice on a, a, a cell. Uh, practice on, well, I guess you could use a cell that's perhaps been compromised or broken, uh, but it will come to you. That it, it's not a natural sensation to hold a superheated tab, uh, solder iron over a bus tab, but like everything else, driving was foreign to us, but we do it now every day and don't even think about it. Brushing our teeth, using a blender, I mean, you name it. So keep it in perspective. Don't panic. Don't make it more than it is. You can master this. Uh, I started never having done it before, and I mastered it. You can too. All right, thank you for watching, and let's join this pair in with a string. See you then.